Remember my blog where I went all the way to London Heathrow from Asia just to take a quick shower? Well, after making a stop in Hong Kong from Manila the other day, I'm off to the second leg of my quick trip to Europe, this time taking Aeroflot Russian Airlines to Moscow. Stick around on the second part of my ridiculous journey to get a glimpse of Europe without visas right here on airline travel and airports. And so the second leg of my journey begins at Hong Kong International Airport. It's make or break today, either I'd be allowed to take my flight to Europe or get denied that I'd need to buy another ticket to fly back to Manila direct. And it seems I'm already getting into some problem at check-in. Right now they found uh, my route uh, stream, so they're going to verify my uh, itinerary. Flying from Hong Kong to Manila via Europe and with no visas, Let's see if my research over some technicalities will help pull this one off. Two boarding class, Hong Kong to Moscow and two more flight from Moscow to Amsterdam. Boarding time 11.15, so gate number check later. Thank you. After a bit of suspense, I was finally handed my boarding pass. With careful planning, I somewhat knew I'd be able to stop at certain airports in Europe that don't require transit visas. And as long as I have onward tickets, which in my case, will take me home under a very, very peculiar route. Moving along, a glimpse of my country's flag carrier shows up in sight, as if wishing me luck on this outrageous voyage to see Europe. Now seeing Russian flag carrier Aeroflot from a distance, all the more I had mixed feelings of being scared yet excited at the same time. Upon getting to the gate, I get to see our aircraft up close. I often see Aeroflot in many of my flights to Hong Kong, and I'm simply in disbelief that flying aboard it today is now possible. I can only stare at it long enough that I might just end up crying. I'm finally flying to Russia this time. Soon, we were called for boarding, which all the more made my heart go faster with every step I made. It seemed that things are just happening too fast for me to realize if this is all even real. I used to dream of visiting Russia all my life, only getting ideas of what it's like to be there through photos and videos that I see on TV and the internet. Well, here we go. Now this is the magic of air travel that I'm talking about. It's like boarding the plane for the first time every time. What adds to the wonder of it all is getting to experience something new. Stepping inside a Russian airliner with an all-Russian crew in a cabin with a Russian setup. It simply leaves me awestruck experiencing bits of Russian culture and hospitality the moment I step inside the plane. The cabin alone exudes a bright and unique feel, with seats having vibrant color schemes that's found in many modern and innovative European designs. What's more, I was told that Russians rarely smile at strangers, but it seems that passengers and crew members alike would either smile or nod as I walk along the aisle. I sure appreciate the friendly and welcoming gesture, thinking that what I was tipped off about Russians being stingy with their smiles isn't so bad after all. For those who have been following my blogs, you know very well where my favorite spot is. It's always at the back of the plane where I have some privacy and the freedom to stand up and move around, especially during long-haul flights. Hello. Hi. <laughs> okay, we're here at Terraflot. It's my first time to... It's my first time to fly Terraflot to Russia. Yeah. Enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> Well, that includes being able to mingle with crew members at the rear galley. Meanwhile, with this being my first time on board Aeroflot, I continue to explore some more, checking out how the rear lavatory of this 777 aircraft looks like. So far, it's all neat and simple, with two of these facilities at the back and eight more found in different spots all throughout the entire cabin. But what has always grabbed my attention are the seats. With colors in striking contrast of blue and red-orange scheme, these seats upholstered with cloth along with those IFEs and USB power ports, are sure enough to keep you comfortable in long-haul flights. Still restless, I decided to check out what's going on at the rear galley, finding it bare except for a few containers that seem to be meals reserved for crew members. Not much happening here for now, but during flight, this is one area that has a lot of movement, especially when crew members prepare for meal service. Uh, a few minutes before we close doors and then Right after, they're just basically preparing for people coming in. And the uh, yeah, crew members are still helping with the passengers. 
Anyhow, boarding was taking a while, and I eventually had to settle and enjoy my seat, savoring the view outside and the thought that I might be the only Filipino passenger on board this plane amidst an almost all Russian crowd. Other than that, it's good to know that no one else is occupying the seat next to me, which means I can move freely and make use of the space during the entire 10-hour flight. Now let's see what we got in front that'll entertain me other than the in-seat IFE. Now remember, this flight was taken months before the world was shaken by the pandemic. At that time, airline companies would provide a good amount of reading materials that can be found in every seat pocket. Nowadays, you might hardly find this much stuff as airlines tend to cut costs. But back then, what I found was a pack of earphones, a familiar item and mainstay in every seat pocket, which is an air sickness bag that I hope I'd never use, and Aeroflot safety card for this particular type of aircraft. At first glance, I was intimidated as words were in Cyrillic, but taking a closer look, it had English instructions all along. Still, it's easy to decipher what the pictures want to convey, and it's not at all difficult to understand. More from my seat pocket is Aeroflot's in-flight magazine, which is issued monthly with contents featuring world news, celebrity stuff, the latest gadgets and luxury items, as well as destination highlights and travel tips. For this month's issue, the magazine seems thicker and heavier than usual, which I believe is expected as we were a couple of weeks away from the holidays. There's just lots of product ads in it, among write-ups that include airport maps and guides on how to go along with filling up your immigration cards, as well as other travel information. Not to worry, as there's always an English translation to it. Just as I thought that's all to it, another magazine is found. This time, it's Aeroflot Style. Also a monthly magazine that showcases the latest trends in fashion, footwear, bags, jewelry, and accessories, and also highlight must-visit spa and restaurants all over the world. Lastly, we have Aeroflot Sky Shop magazine, featuring a wide range of products that include perfumes, cosmetics, gadgets, and souvenirs from the world's leading brands. Other than that, there's some extra safety cards that I don't know how it got there. Soon crew members go around to prepare the cabin for departure, and while they're at it, I notice that pillows here aren't the fluffiest, but I'm sure it's gonna serve its purpose later when I sleep. And before I knew it, safety demo is presented in our IFEs, with an impressive intro beginning with slick looking crew members walking along the departure gates. Now this kinda reminded me of early James Bond films, if not the movie Austin Powers, and it sure made me glued watching the video. Our plane soon gets its pushback, and adding to the excitement is the sight of another Philippine Airlines jet outside my window. Crew members do one more round making sure all passengers have complied to safety instructions. Now it was only a matter of time till our plane gets to the runway, and before we knew it, our aircraft was taking off bound for Mother Russia. Once up in the air, I began savoring the calm environment of the cabin till I got distracted by the sight below. We were flying over Hong Kong's old Kai Tak International Airport, known before for those challenging aircraft approaches into a runway located in a busy city center. After spotting one of Hong Kong's famous historical sites, I turned to the IFE, taking time to check its features as our plane continued to ascend. Now what we have in coach are 9-inch touchscreen monitors composed of about 200 Russian and international films, TV shows, music, and popular games. But for me, I'd like tuning in to the real-time map to track where a plane sat during flight. At cruising altitude, I had to stretch for a bit at the back before returning to my seat. Glad to be able to stand up and move around freely with no one occupying the seat next to me. And by the time I got back, a crew member was handing out amenity kits for use in this 10-hour flight. For flights lasting 6 hours or more, Aeroflot hand these amenity kits which come in colorful Ziploc plastic bags. Given this stuff, I sure felt like a kid eager to check out the contents of what seemingly looks like a party loot bag. Now let's see what contents fill up this packet. First one out of the bag is a pair of slippers with a lot more items stuffed inside. A tube containing a moisturizing lotion, a pair of earplugs, and something I'm definitely gonna need. Eye shades which I'll use later at the airports I'll be in if I need to take a power nap. Shortly, another crew member began handing out menu cards, which is in Russian. 
It's good to learn Cyrillic before this trip that I can read some simple words like Napitkie or Vina, but it wasn't enough. Now flipping the card just made my life easier. Serving of in-flight meals followed with drinks given out first. I opted for 7-Up as it was the easiest to pronounce in a way that made the flight attendant smile. By the time we were flying over Wuhan, China, our meals were ready, with one set placed on my tray table. In-flight meals are served beginning at the back, with crew members working their way to the front. I opted for chicken curry over seafood stew, which seemed more filling and flavorful than the latter. And what other way to begin my meal with smoked salmon as appetizer? Mmm-hmm. And so the first meal service continued for some time, with me enjoying the view of the clouds soon as I'm done. After that, it was a good time to sleep, only to be shaken a bit by slight turbulence. Close to halfway towards Moscow, I had to relax my feet, taking my shoes off and replacing it with travel slippers that I brought along. And with hours to our destination, I decided to try out this airline's prepaid Wi-Fi service, which costs about 9 US dollars per hour with 50 megabytes worth of data so I can post a few photos on Facebook, get in touch with family members, as well as challenge some friends over a few rounds on Mobile Legends. After a while, I realized that a few hours have already passed, and it was time to stand up again and stretch, and to visit the rear galley as snacks were prepared at the back for anyone to take. I guess some passengers got ahead of me as there were a few items left. I'm just so glad I still got some treats, especially the last piece of that popular Russian chocolate, Alyonka. More than halfway into the flight, I still couldn't sleep. And restless as I was, I decided to make use of my time to edit some blogs and keep my YouTube channel updated. So off I go compiling clips of my previous travel till I got distracted by fascinating views outside my window. There's just snow-covered landscape everywhere down below. Soon, crew members are seen pushing their carts along the aisles. We were about three hours away from our destination, with enough time for a second meal service. Now this has got to be dinner, with choices between pan-fried perch and chicken stew. Well, I'm having chicken again, and as usual, there were no problems in terms of presentation and quantity. Or maybe because I was already getting hungry and just happy to be on board Aeroflot that I just didn't mind anything else. After that, a cup of coffee and a magnificent view of the clouds were enough to conclude the meal. It was also a good time for passengers to use the lavatory to freshen up, as by then, we could already feel our aircraft descending. Seeing Moscow city lights from above was already surreal. Never had I thought that one day I'd set foot in one of the countries I've always dreamed of visiting. I still can't believe it, but I'm now arriving at the heart of Mother Russia. Honestly, I was kind of teary-eyed as our plane's engines went on reverse thrust. More so when the words Moscow Sheremetyevo flashed before me saying that I've in fact arrived in Russia. I was just left speechless in my seat, captivated by an environment far different from where I'm from. But then cabin lights were switched on, snapping me out of being awestruck and reminding me that I have to go on my way. My overall experience with this airline was very pleasant, and as I disembarked, I just had to thank some crew members, particularly Valeria, who has been cheerful towards me during her in-flight duties. Yes, it's those little things that matter a lot that make me want to fly Aeroflot again. The moment I got off the plane, it was mixed emotions. Thrilled and happy to set foot here, at the same time fearful and worried that I might get questioned at immigration for not having a transit visa. But based on my research, I don't need one for this airport as I'll be continuing on with another flight after a 12-hour layover. With that in mind, I just kept my pace, enjoying the view of parked planes as I walked along inside Russia's busiest airport. But I can't deny it, every step I made towards passport control made my heart go faster. But thankfully, I had no issues there, and I was swiftly out into the departure zone, where I'm instantly met by Matryoshka dolls that symbolize Russia and its rich culture. More to it are other souvenir items from shirts, shot glasses, and vodka among others. But I just had to get my mom one of these items that significantly represent this country and its heritage. It's pricey here at the airport, but you can get a small one for about 700 rubles. In this kind of solo travel, I sure felt alone in this huge airport. 
and how I wish I had travel companions with me whom I can share this feeling of uncertainty, wonder, and excitement as I continuously explore the place. Anyhow, it was announced that starting from 2021, Filipinos can visit and travel anywhere in Russia from 8 to 16 days on e-visa. Thankful for this new directive, hopefully I can freely visit Moscow's popular landmarks by then, this time along with friends adventurous enough to travel with me. In the meantime, well, it seems that the ones smiling a lot in this place are these dolls. I notice that the people here don't smile a lot, and their culture may differ from what I'm used to, but don't mistake them for being rude. It's just how it is, and like everyone else that I know, there's always this nice character in them. Knowing that, I carry on and did some plane spotting for a bit before accomplishing another mission, which is to try out authentic Russian caviar and vodka during my quick visit here. Now the bartender was friendly enough to remind me not to drink too much as I still have a flight to catch early next day. And heeding to his considerate advice, I carefully followed his instructions, which led from one shot glass to another. Well, what a way to enjoy all these while looking at the window and watching planes go by. By the time I'm beginning to see double, I had to go check into one of the airport hotels to rest and spend the night there before taking my connecting flight to Amsterdam the next day. In this airport alone, I've honestly encountered bad customer service and unhelpful airport employees, as well as cheerful saleswomen and restaurant staff that were very accommodating. Well, it happens anywhere in the globe, and it's not stopping me from embracing this country's flaws and the goodness that I've seen. In my quick stay here, I'm still grateful for this short immersion, getting a glimpse of Russia's way of life. Before I turn in for the night, I utter a short prayer, thankful for this chance even to be at the confines of this airport, and promising to come back next time for more of what Russia has to offer. For airline travel in airports, this is Mitch Young. Thank you for watching.